All right, you've seen the videos, how the iPad Pro replaced my Mac Pro or high-end desktop. This is the one you need, etc, etc, etc. This is not one of those videos. It's time for a real conversation on why the iPad Pro is not quite a full replacement for a MacBook Pro. For me, if there's one recurring theme with the iPad Pro, it's the A word. It's almost there. Let me tell you a story. My story. So I have an aging 2016 MacBook Pro and I was looking to upgrade. And then the 2020 iPad Pro comes along and everyone talks about how great and powerful it is. So I went ahead and got myself one in the hope that it could replace my main aging device. So let's start at the beginning, Rowan. What do you use your MacBook Pro for? I have a full-time job, so I use it for work email, even virtual window sessions on it. And I do video editing for this channel. Do hit subscribe if you want to stay updated. And also record some music semi-seriously. And the reason I went for an Apple MacBook Pro in the beginning was to do both without compromise. I got it around the time we started with this YouTube channel and I realized iMovie wasn't cutting it anymore. Recently, I've also added Logic Pro to that list. These two applications aren't on the iPad Pro yet, but the clamors to bring them to iPad OS have been increasing over the past few years especially since the first time Apple put out such an overpowered device in 2018. So for now, that's not something I can even get on the iPad, even though Luma Touch appears to be a capable video editor and GarageBand as well, a DAW. Hey Rowan, isn't the uh, 11 inches you have there a little bit small? What do you think of the form factor? So the screen size is fine as a tablet, and I could live with it. A big letdown for me, however, is the aspect ratio. The 1.43 is to 1 aspect simply isn't the same as the laptop's widescreen 16 is to 10. And it's not great for productivity. And the moment I want to start doing desktopy stuff like using an external monitor, it's quite disempowering actually, because the iPad can only output to the same aspect ratio as the screen. So you're going to get these black bands on external monitors, and you won't be using the full screen real estate. So having all that horsepower is like a nothing burger when it comes to external monitors. But I suppose that's a software update just waiting to happen. But then again, this is Apple. So maybe not. Another almost. You type a lot of angry internet comments and you make a lot of typos doing so. What do you think of the typing experience so far? That's right, I happen to type quite a lot. Not just the aforementioned angry comments but also real grown-up work stuff like Microsoft Word documents and PowerPoint bullets. And the HRME scripts. So do subscribe if you made it this far in the video. We think we're pretty awesome. Yes, we are. Anyway, for typing, I think I prefer a laptop keyboard that's stable and reliable. I'm still waiting on the iPad's new Magic Keyboard Plus trackpad cover, so I'll reserve judgment on that just yet. But, but, should a keyboard <laughs> really be optional on a pro device and with all the additional money you spend on that cover you might as well go and get yourself a base model macbook pro what about the port situation i was pleasantly surprised when they released the ipad pro with usb type c isn't that a positive While the replacement of Lightning with the USB Type-C is a welcome one and makes this a viable alternative, the fact that it has just one USB Type-C port puts it more on par with a MacBook Air than a Pro. Another thing that any kind of audio pros are going to hate is the fact that there's no headphone jack on the device. While we are all grudgingly on board with wireless music, I don't see anyone using wireless headphones for doing serious mixing or mastering work. What, am I just supposed to replace my Sennheiser HD600 with a WH1000XM3 or even worse, an AirPods Pro? There's a $9 adapter for that. And that to me, Kevin, shows that this isn't targeted towards real audio pros, but more towards serious hobbyists. I mean, the speakers sound great eh, for a tablet, but you ain't gonna be using these speakers for any kind of monitoring or any kind of real production. You could argue that most audio interfaces could be connected through USB Type-C, but I see where you're going with this. You mentioned iPadOS has vastly improved. How does it compare to macOS? Loving that they've integrated mouse support into it. And all the multitasking stuff just makes it a better productivity machine. But it still doesn't approach the open nature of macOS and 
Windows for that matter, where you don't have to jailbreak your devices just to get apps that the manufacturer doesn't deem worthy. I suppose that's more Wozniak than Jobs. But for anyone with any kind of pro workflow, that kind of freedom is extremely valuable. All pro workflow? I think you're missing a big group here. Digital drawings and sketching artists? Bingo! That's not me though. Have you seen me draw? While audio pros may not be crazy about this thing, it does cater outstandingly well to that very specific kind of creator. The Apple Pencil and the apps on the iPad Pro are second to none and I just wish they would have given as much thought to audio and video creation. The presence of great microphones and semi-decent speakers notwithstanding. So if all the almost were fixed, would you consider putting your MacBook up on Mark Plus? That's eBay by the way for all our international viewers. Why did you buy this device exactly? Well, I'm not sure. It's more like a peek into the future of desktop computing. A really powerful tablet that can take on most jobs a desktop can. And you know what? Together with a MacBook, they make a great bundle. An awesome portable touch-based device with the best stylus on the market and a great tablet with good speakers. And you share the same charging cable. It also doubles as an additional monitor to extend your laptop using Sidecar. Absolutely. My conclusion, this almost replaces the MacBook Pro, but in the meanwhile, it's a great but totally optional addition to my work and creator toolkit. You've probably just saved some money and we've been DHRME.